You know, my friends, uh, this is Patrick L. Wooden, Bishop P. L. Wooden, and you're watching P. L. Wooden Exposed. Now, I've just finished talk, talking to you about uh, what Paul did in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, dealing with the man who married his stepmother. This guy was messed up. He was, and that cougar who married him, she was messed up also. But who was also messed up was the church at Corinth. Uh, they tolerated his, his wicked behavior. Paul wrote to them and told them not to tolerate it and, uh, 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 and told them to turn the man over to Satan for the destruction of the body that his soul might be saved. And, uh, and, 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 and they did just that. Now, the good thing about it is uh, after Paul wrote to them, Paul also wrote to them in 2 Corinthians um, uh, uh, chapter 2 and 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Now, between uh, 1 Corinthians chapter um, 5, or the entire book of 1 Corinthians, and the book of 2 Corinthians, there is a missing letter called the severe letter. Um, and in this severe letter, Paul wrote to them uh, dealing with uh, um, um, this young man. As a matter of fact, there was a letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians that we do not have uh, that he wrote before he wrote 1 Corinthians. Because according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9, Paul says, I wrote unto you in an epistle. That is, in a previous epistle, I wrote to you not to company with fornicators. So this particular epistle was an epistle that Paul wrote before he wrote 1 Corinthians because he's mentioning it here in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9. He says, I wrote unto you not in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, but not only the fornicators, or with covetous people or extortioners, you know, swindlers in business, or idolaters, people who worship other gods. Uh, for then must ye needs go out of the world. He said, now the only way to keep from, from um, associating with them altogether is you got to leave the world, you got to leave the earth because they're everywhere, quite frankly. He says, but as much as you can, you should discriminate and not let these fornicators, swindlers, uh, and these people be your best friends. You ought not to be hanging out at the mall together, going to the movies together, going to the games together, and that kind of a thing. He says, but now I write unto you not to keep company if a man that is called a brother, all right, now he's part of the brotherhood, he's saved, be a fornicator or a covetous or an idolater or a, a railer, that is, he's a, a abusive, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, he says, uh, with uh, such a one, know not to eat. Now, if the man is claiming to be saved, and he's a fornicator, fornication meaning uh, any uh, sexual activity other than the sexual acti activity between a husband and his wife. That covers uh, uh, incest, it covers bestiality, homosexuality, lesbianism, objectivism, uh, uh, necro, uh, uh, sex with dead bodies, <laughs> you name it, necromancy, all that stuff, uh, all of it, uh, it's, it's wrong. As he says now, if, if a person claims to be saved and they're doing these things, he says, we are not to keep company with them. He says, for what have I to do to judge them that are without? Paul says, it's really not, uh, I'm, I'm really not trying to judge, and there's that word again, not to judge the sinner. You can't take the Christian biblical standards for morality that God has for the church and apply it to the world. The world hadn't been saved yet. But he says, if you're in this thing and you, you name the name of Christ, we do apply this standard to you. He says, um, for what have I to do to judge them that are uh, uh, without? Do you not, do not ye judge them that are within so we are actually, 
supposed to apply the standard of judgment to those who are actually in the church, singing on the choir, preaching in the pulpits, directing the music, playing the music on the deacon boards, in the bishopric, uh, who are superintendents, pastors, elders, missionaries, mothers, deaconess, deacons, you name it. If we're within the church, then the powers that be are supposed to judge, to hold up the standards. And we all uh, need to fall in line, repent of sin, and do what the Bible says. So Paul says this, this in verse 13, but them that are without God, them that are without God judgeth. The sinners, God's going to deal with them. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Here, the wicked person is the person who is within the church, who are within the church. Those wicked persons within the church, we're to put them away. We're to deal with them. But as for the sinner, God's going to take care of them. Now, one of the, one of the areas where I think we're failing at is that we skip this part of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We skip where Paul says in verse 5, put the man out of the church, deliver such a one unto Satan. And we rush to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, where Paul talks about how we are to forgive a such a one, um, lest they be overtaken in verse 7 with overmuch sorrow. That is, unless, they, unless we judge them too uh, excessively, unless we are draconian in our judgment. But what we were leaving out is that before Paul wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 5, or the book of 1 Corinthians, he wrote a letter telling us not to company with fornicators. So actually, 1 Corinthians is actually 2 Corinthians. That was a, I've just showed you where there was a letter written, an epistle written before we got 1 Corinthians, but we don't have that epistle. The severe letter was the letter that was written between 1 Corinthians, the 1 Corinthians that we know, and 2 Corinthians, because he makes reference to the severe letter. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, he says this, uh, For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. The letter here he's references referencing is not 1 Corinthians, but it is the severe letter that was written to the church at Corinth between 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. And in this severe letter, Paul, Paul well, the letter was what, uh, as it is described, it was severe in the way he dealt with the sin. But the thing that was wonderful about the severe letter was that it brought about some wonderful things. In, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul says, Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorrow or sorry after a godly manner, that you may receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. He says, for behold this self-same thing, that you sorrowed after a godly sort. He says, now notice the results of it. What carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things you, were, you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. He said, the letter made you angry, but look at the eagerness and the, and the clearing of yourselves, the holiness, the righteous indignation, all of the good things that came as a result of us dealing with this sin in a severe, quick manner. I say that we should obey the Bible. And when dealing with 
immorality, when dealing with uh, extortion, covetousness, homosexuality, lesbianism, all these, these things, uh, these wickednesses, that if we deal with them quick, fast, and in a hurry, uh, that it may, uh, we'll step on some toes, we'll make a few people upset, people will get mad, people will leave the church, people will say bad things about us. But in the end, good things will come out of it. People will repent, people will get right, and the church will be better. Well, I thank you for your time. Um, think about what I'm saying. One thing is for certain, everything I said is scripture. You can read it for yourself. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, study it. Um, read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 7. All of this deals with the same incidents. And also in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 6, uh, Paul speaks to um, uh, 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 something that I think I need to say right as I go off, leave you today. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and, and verse 9, he says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. There's that big word again, fornication, pornea, any illicit or illegal sexual activity. Any sexual activity other than the sexual activity between a man, a husband, and his wife. Um, neither fornication, nor idolaters, nor adulterers nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. The abusers of themselves with mankind is the actual reference to a homosexuality. And it's an interesting, interesting uh, play on words, abusers of themselves. And there are, there are not many activities that are more abusive to the male reproductive system than homosexual sex. You are abusing, my brother, yourself. You are destroying your own, uh, uh, your own digestive uh, uh, tract. You're destroying um, your, your, your own body. And, uh, and uh, down the road, you, uh, and many are suffering the, the consequences now. Uh, you, you, you're, going to, you're, going to, you're going to destroy yourself. And, and, and you ought to let the Lord deliver you. You ought to let the Lord set you free. Um, the, 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 the diseases and the destruction on the male anatomy has been documented uh, by uh, multiple doctors and by the medical community of how men destroy their rectums, how men destroy the sphincter muscle of the anus, how men literally destroy their ability to control their own bowel as a result of participating in homosexual sex. Um, the, 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 the AIDS outgrowth, the herpes and syphilis uh, uh, outbreaks and all of these things uh, that take place. Uh, there is a condition called the um, uh, gay bowel syndrome. It is an, an intestinal syndrome that doctors know when men come in uh, with the syndrome. Doctors know that the men are practicing homosexuality, practicing homosexual sex. I don't care if they're built like Hercules and look like a Greek god and, 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 and they're the most masculine man in town. If they have this particular syndrome, then doctors know. Brothers, don't abuse yourselves. Don't let the devil destroy you. Come out. Ladies, come out. Um, uh, uh, lesbianism is not God's way. Uh, uh, most lesbians, 96% uh, 90, of lesbians, the number may be higher, uh, uh, cheat on their lesbian lovers and they go right back to men uh, because uh, she can dress like a man, she can walk like a man, she can talk like a man, but she's not a man. And lady, you was made uh, for a husband, not for a man wannabe, a, a male pretender. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a lady who is acting all masculine and, and she's lying. She, she can dress like a man, stand like a man, act like a man. Uh, but unless you had an operation of sorts, once a month, you're reminded that you're not a man. You're a woman. And you'd make someone a good wife. Yeah. So, this is Bishop P.L. Wooden talking to you from P.L. Wooden Exposed. Let's live holy. Let's do what is right. And oh, by the way, I am. <laughs>
touch of God in Christ.